Credit Suisse sheds nearly 25%. Key backer says no more money. We cannot because we would go above 10%. It's a regulatory issue. Um, the Saudi lender acquired a stake of almost 10% last year after taking part in Credit Suisse Capital's raising and commitment to investing up to $1.5 billion was Frank's. Credit Suisse dropped by as much as 24%, reignited some of the jitters among investors about the resilience of the global banking system. Uh, Ralph Hammers, chief executive of Swiss rival UBS, said the lender has benefited from recent market turmoil. Credit Suisse on Tuesday published its annual report for 2022, saying the bank had identified material weaknesses in control over financial reporting and not yet stemmed customer outflows. Here is uh, a, a look here at uh, what's been going on with uh, Credit Suisse. Um, this goes all the way back to 2020. You can see it's been on a downslide ever since. Um, the SVB collapse was not good for it. Um, so we got Credit Suisse, one of the one of the largest banks in the world. Thank you, shot, please. Uh, they're the second largest bank in Switzerland trying to recover from a string of scandals. Um, but more like the biggest scandal is they just don't have any money. Um, so there you go. We got more banks potentially collapsing. Uh, we have... California Governor Gavin Newsom failing to publicly disclose his SVB ties while lobbying for a bailout. Mm. There it is. Uh, we have Gavin Newsom with the puppet master himself, or the, the puppet, not the master. Uh, California Governor Newsom lobbied the White House and the Department of the Treasury about the pending bailout of Silicon Valley, uh, even as three of his private wineries had apparently been among the bank's top clients, or clients, period. Um, let's see. Tuesday report by Ken Klippenstein. It, it, he's got to be related to Corey, right? I, I saw, uh, I don't, I don't know. I saw the same thing and had the same question, but I mean, you can't imagine that's too common of a last name. I've never heard it before. Yeah. Well, I don't, did he change his to McGruber as well? I don't know. Um, okay. Uh, Newsom's personal relationship with SVB went beyond the wineries. Um, he maintained personal accounts there for years. Newsom could have stood to benefit directly from the Biden administration's rescue package. On Saturday, Newsom's office issued a statement that Newsom had been in touch with the highest levels of leadership at the White House and Treasury. That means he talked to the president. Uh, following day, Newsom praised the administration for acting swiftly and decisively. No mention of his own ties to the bank. So, um, you know, he was talking about the favorable things that can happen. Oh, that's the, the show, Silicon Valley, I guess. There's, there's Gabe over there. Oh, Gabe. Mm -hmm. uh, Newsom has not discussed his personal ties publicly. It's unclear whether he disclosed them to the White House or whether he did it this weekend. As an elected official, he's prohibited by state law from influencing a governmental decision in which the official knows or has reason to believe the official has financial interests. So, and I'll tell you this, uh, I've been telling you guys that Gavin Newsom was going to run for president. There may be, there may be an issue there now from what I've been told. The issue is uh, apparently in California, there's going to be a, I believe it's a Senate seat that is open. And did you know this, TJ? Did you know that the sitting governor, it may not be in every state, but maybe in California, maybe every state, the sitting governor can choose to replace that Senate seat with himself or herself hmm. without an election. No, I did not. Yeah. So Gavin Newsom may do that instead of running for president right now, may just go to being uh, a senator. Um, now, you know, there wasn't, a, I don't know what the seat is. I, don't shoot the messenger if they're, that's slightly wrong. Um, but that's, that's what I'm hearing. So. Somebody in the chat says Newsom's wife was on the Silicon Valley board. That'd be crazy. That's is a that pretty true? big non-disclosure right there. Is that true? I don't know. Let's look. Let's yeah, see pull. if I can find it. Yeah, see if you can find it. BlackRock uh, Fink's worries, dominoes from easy money are starting to fall. Larry Fink, CEO of the world's largest asset manager, also known as Satan himself, says he's worried that more financial cracks will emerge as the Federal Reserve raises interest rate. Look, guys, this is them putting pressure to stop raising rates. They want more free money, more free money. That's what they want. The BlackRock CEO said the sharp or sharply higher inflation seen over the past year is one we've already uh, been paying for years of easy money. It was the first domino to drop, pretending that inflation will remain elevated for longer and likely will stay closer 3.5 to 4% for the next few years, compares with the Federal Reserve's target of 2%. Thinks that it's too early to know how widespread the damage is from the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank and failure of two smaller banks in the past week. But notice that regulators have responded rapidly and that their decisive actions have helped stave off contagion risks. Uh, there could be a third domino to fall. Years of lower rates had the effect of driving some asset owners to increase their commitment to liquid investments, trading lower liquidity for higher returns. There's a risk now of a liquidity mismatch for these asset owners, especially those with leveraged portfolios. Last year, BlackRock was caught in the crosshairs of an increasingly politicized campaign against environmental 
social and governance or ESG investing. I told you this stuff's a scam. In October, the company issued a public rebuttal to accusations of boycotts, blah, 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 blah. So there you go. Voyager, by its U.S. sale deal runs into new regulatory roadblock. These Voyager people. Feel so bad for them. Uh, according to a motion filed by U.S. trustee William Harrington <clears throat> and other government lawyers before a New York bankruptcy court, the court improperly exceeded its statutory power in authorizing the pardoning. In fact, they've asked for a two-week hold on the court's ap approval of the transaction so they could submit an appeal. Uh, the clause, which the court authorized on March 7th after finding that 97% of Voyager customers supported the idea, was designed to shield those involved in the sale from being held personally accountable for its implementation. Despite not objecting to other aspects of the proposed transaction, U.S. authorities claim the provision would make it more difficult for the government to exercise its police and regulatory responsibilities. The court cannot tell the government to speak now or forever hold its peace before Voyager and Binance U.S. are wed. Uh, Williams argued that until appeals are resolved in higher courts, approval of the arrangement, or at least those proportion, or excuse me, or at least those portions that restrict the government's capacity to execute the law should be suspended. On March 6th, Securities and Exchange Commission objected to the plan as well, signing the extraordinary and highly improper exculpation provision. Exculpation provision. I think I said that right. As he claimed that Binance the U.S. is running an unregistered blah, blah, blah. They say everything's security. Screw, screw the SEC. So uh, the long and the short of this here is, is that, um, yeah, I mean, it's getting close, it looks like. It's getting close, but, uh, you know, I, I don't think this is much of a regulatory roadblock. Coinbase announces banking partnership with Standard Chartered amid Singapore expansion. Uh, Coinbase has said it uh, has said it is bid to expand internationally in the next eight weeks and will begin expansion with Singapore. Uh, the exchange noted that Singaporean retail customers can now transfer funds between the Coinbase accounts and any domestic bank. Um, apart from upgrading its platform for transfers, uh, the collaboration with Standard Charter opens a road for exchange between the Singaporean dollar and crypto. Uh, let's see. Quest to become a crypto hub comes with a regulatory mandate. Coinbase also made a debut with SingPass. So there you go. That's fun. Familiar and secure two click experience Singaporeans are accustomed to using with their app. So uh, it looks like kind of a 2FA kind of deal there. Um, Ethereum, Chappella upgrade forked with Gurley Testnet. That's what went down. Uh, the much awaited Shanghai update grade. Now, this will be the upgrade that officially makes it where I think people can withdraw their uh, ETH from their validator nodes. Yep. <clears throat> was executed on Ethereum's Gurley testnet on the 15th of March. Uh, the Gurley network, it's the Ides of March today. If you're looking for uh, Caesar to uh, have his back stabbed, uh, that's a thing. Um, uh, so the Gurley network is a decentralized network designed to be testing and development environment for Ethereum-based decentralized applications uh, through the Shanghai upgrade, which is also called Chappella. <laughs> uh, validators can withdraw their state ETH, um, blah, 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 blah. Excitement around Ethereum is up. You know what's interesting is, is we've been looking at the, the charts. Uh, you know, Bitcoin and Ethereum have both been holding very well. The altcoins have not been doing good. Nope. Uh, we've got the Bitcoin dominance number going up. But if you notice, the Ethereum dominance has been staying, sta you know, staying pretty stable. So um, wholesale prices post unexpected decline of 0.1% in February. Retail sales fall. Let's see. Wholesale prices post an unexpected decline. Uh, producer price index fell 0.1% for the month. 0.2% drop in goods helped fuel the headline increase. Food services and drinking establishments um, fell 2.2%. So let's see. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, there's not a lot of sports going on. I think that is the, in the United States, that's the thing, right? We just got basketball right now. That's it. I think that has a direct effect on retail bar sales, wouldn't you say? I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. I mean, that's the only reason why I go to, uh, it's the only reason why I go ever to like a, like a Taco Mac or something like that. To watch you know, games. Watch some games, whatever. I mean, with, I don't know. I don't know all the people. It's very sad. Never mind. Yeah, no, I would think, you know, when base, baseball season gets into going, like, obviously that affects the battery, all that stuff down there. Yeah, the battery is big, big time down there. Right. Braves. You guys have never been to uh, Braves Field. Uh, what's it called? Truist Park Truist now. Park, yeah. Truist. Named after a bank, of course. Okay. Uh, they have the battery down there. A lot of good restaurants. Good time. But you better get down there hours and hours and hours for the game if you expect to eat because it's crazy. Oh, somebody said hockey. <clears throat> Hockey's going on right now. I don't even know. <laughs> they're not selling a lot of anything. No, not here. They're not. Not since freaking Winnipeg stole my team. Yeah. <sighs> Makes me so mad. Uh, here's how current Bitcoin having cycle stacks up against past ones. The latest Bitcoin cycle recently passed 150,000 blocks milestone. 
So far, Bitcoin has observed three halving events, November 2012, July 2016, and May 2020. Next one will take place sometime in um, uh, 2024. And I know you guys think that I've made this Bitcoin halving up. Uh, that that's the thing I made up. It's real. Since halvings are periodic, they're a popular way of mapping Bitcoin cycles by using them at starting and endpoints. Uh, and you guys can see here are the cycles. They're all very similar, isn't it? Um, I guess this is where we're at. This is the, the one today. Um, you can see, here it is. Boom, boom, boom. I, I think what you'll see is uh, the this U-shape here for the last bear market was uh, much shorter than the one that we had here. Um, according to this, we're just now at the place where we came out of the U-shape last time. This time we got a little bit of a premature pump. And now we should get this really big, uh, you know, bull trap up here um, and see what happens when we go down towards, uh, you know, this would have been the pandemic crash. This would have been the 2019 pump. Um, this would have been your October pump, I believe. And this would have been January, February lead up in 2020 uh, to the to pandemic crash. And then boom, we started the whole thing over again. So pretty cool if you ask me. I mean, I think it all matches pretty well. Although the timing isn't as striking as the bottoms, the latest cycle building up a rally out of the bear lows also looks similar to what happened in the second cycle where the April 2019 um, rally took place. Um, for the chart, it's visible with Bitcoin retest this level very recently. Power and health through the Bitcoin market. I mean, here it is, the U-shape. I told you guys, once you come out of the U-shape, you don't come back. Once you come out of the U-shape, you do not come back into the U-shape. So um, there we go. 